okay the first one we will see the derivations or equations for half wave uncontrolled rectifier circuit with r load so uncontrolled it means i am going to use diode and it's going to be a half wave it means I, it will be only one diode and the load will be just a resistive resistor so this is the circuit so you can see here just only one diode i am applying the input signal i am not showing any transformer here just for a simplification and at the output i am getting only a positive half cycle conduction so this is the complete waveform so i am applying the input like this so this is one complete cycle so 0 to 2 pi so or 0 to 360 degree and then the second uh, full cycle is 2 pi to 4 pi and the third full cycle is 4 pi to 6 pi and so on so for this 0 to 2 pi the diode conducts only from 0 to pi because this is half wave rectifier and then 2 pi to 3 pi 4 pi to 5 pi and it's not conducting or using the second half of the input so for one full cycle we know rectifiers are giving dc output for one full cycle of the input signal 0 to 2 pi 2 pi we can also call you know we know that right pi is equal to 180 degree so 2 pi or 360 degree this circuit only conducts half cycle of the input signal it means it conducts only 0 to pi in practice we apply multiple number of input cycles into the circuit here i in this example i have shown only three full cycles right this is a cycle one and this is cycle two and this is cycle three but when i apply the input it's going to be quite a lot for example if, if in norway standard it's going to be 50 hertz 50 cycles per second so how can we calculate the output how can we calculate the output so whenever we design this kind of circuit we have to do some kind of analysis as a design engineer electrical engineer we should know or we should analyze when we apply some input what output we can expect so that we should know that so it means we have to calculate the output at the output we can calculate the dc values as the average value so you can make the average of each this pulsating dc you can make an average of each of them then you will get the average dc output uh, normally we are making average when we calculate uh, or when we consider the dc current uh, but when we consider the AC current, we have to calculate RMS value. I will tell you in a while what is RMS value. So when we talk about AC signal, RMS value is important. When we talk about a DC signal, this is RMS. And when we talk about the DC value, we have to talk about average. Uh, okay. So for this circuit, we have to derive several uh, formulas. First one is VO average, that means output or the average value of the output voltage. VO average, V is the voltage. And IO average, that means output current, average value of the output current, O I. And similarly, VO RMS, it means this is the RMS value of the output voltage. IO RMS, RMS value of the output current and the load power and then the conduction time of the diode and the peak inverse voltage. Uh, we can simply call this a PAV. PAV of the diode and then the input power factor. So all these parameters, <clears throat> now we have to derive for this circuit. So if you understand this one circuit, then the same principle you can apply in all other circuits. Just please try to give some your attention. Uh, okay, so VO average. First, we will derive the first parameter, average value of the output voltage. This is the output voltage. I am going to find the average value of this one. How can we calculate that? 
So here, whatever happens between zero to two pi, it will repeat again and again, right? Whatever happens between this zero to two pi. So if this circuit process this one cycle, the circuit will process the same style in all other cycles. That is what I mean. So we will take the periodic angle as two pi. So we will consider in our calculations, mathematical calculations, zero to two pi. So if you make the uh, if you make the calculation based on this, it is going to repeat in all other cycles. Uh, you see here, two pi to four pi. This is also the same, three sixty degree. Pi. Actually, if you consider uh, this as a zero, then this is going to be end up with a two pi. So and so on. So normally, how do okay? So now. Uh, look at the output. We get output from 0 to pi, 2 pi to 3 pi, 0 to pi, 2 pi to 3 pi, 4 pi to 5 pi. Now, how can we make an average of these outputs? Practically, you know, we have to calculate now. Normally, how do we make an average? For example, if you want to find an average of three numbers, I already told in the beginning of the lecture today. So now we have three numbers. How can we make a, uh, an average? We add all these numbers and then divide with total number count. So 10 plus 25 plus 30 divided by three. That is how we calculate the average using basic mathematics. So this is possible if they are discrete finite symbols. So because these all are discrete numbers, right? They are separate, separate numbers. So we can make this kind of formula we can use this kind of formula because they are discrete symbols but if you just take from this point to this point so this is zero volt maybe this is somewhere else uh, any other volt x volt and the degree is zero degree to 180 degree so here you can see this is the time and this is the amplitude right v out in terms of in volt this is the time the x-axis so at each second the voltage is different the voltage is increase raising raising and then it's falling falling so it has infinite number of symbols that is the nature of analog signals so still we are having this as an analog signal so the nature of the analog signal is even if you take a, this is an analog signal, this AC signal is an analog input. So even though if you take just from one small part to small part, we have infinite number of symbols. If you, call, if you consider even the floating numbers, for example, one volt, 1.01 volt, 1.02 volt, 1.03, and then 1.1, and then 1.11, and so on. So it's infinite number of symbols. So we cannot really use this standard mathematical formula to make the average value of this one. And you, you know, you have so many pulses like this. So what should we do then? So here we have infinite number of samples between this zero to pi, two pi to three pi, four pi to five pi, and then six pi to seven pi and so on. So we cannot use normal mathematical averaging formula. So we need to use some special mathematical operator that is called integrator. So here we have to use the integral operation in order to find the operation. What is first of all integration? You know, you have already studied about integration, differentiation, uh, algebra, right? So many mathematical, basic mathematics uh, in your courses before. So first of all, what this integration can do, you know, how we represent the integration like this, right? So we always say something like this, v of d with respect to time. So dt, this is called integration. So what the integration is doing, normally integrator is integrating, integrating it or adding the values between certain values. So for example, if I want to add or if you want to make the average from this point to this point, and this is called the output voltage is something like a VO, then I have to do the uh, integration. So for example, integral, you see here, according to the definition between certain intervals, what is the interval here? Zero to pi, 
जीरो टू पाई वी वो विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू टाइम डी टी दिस इज द स्टैंडर्ड वे टू रेप्रेजेंट द इंटेग्रेशन सो वी कैन यूज द इंटेग्रेशन टू फाइंड द एवरेज वैल्यू ऑफ दीज पलसेटिंग डीसीज दट इज द एंसर सो ओके सो नाउ how can we do this integration mathematically we will see that now in detail so remember now we are talking about only single phase i mentioned single phase like this you can also say like this three phase you can say like this why so single phase half wave rectifier uncontrolled we are using diode and with resistive load only we have the resistive so the first parameter i need to find is v o average output average value of the output here so is equal to periodic angle is 1 by 2 pi so remember i told you here the periodic angle is 1 by 2 pi we are going to consider only one cycle but since we are doing the integration average so this is going to repeat in all the cycles so i am using the periodic angle is 1 to 2 pi and the period is the interval is 0 to 2 pi 0 to 2 pi this is one cycle uh so the output is vo vo d omega t because now we are doing with respect to frequency so frequency and time so d omega t where 2 pi is equal to periodic angle that we know that so now One by one divided by two pi. So now I am dividing the interval. So now the same one. I am making zero to integral zero to pi. V O d omega t plus. So this part I am making into two po portion now. This part zero to pi and then pi to two pi. Integral of pi to two pi V O d omega t. So what is the output? in this interval pi to 2 pi is zero there is no output here zero volt so i apply this one as a zero so we don't need to consider this one so we only have this first part 1 divided by 2 pi integral of 0 to pi vm sin omega t where this vm sin omega t comes from suddenly so we are applying the input voltage right this is the input voltage in four year series we represent this sinusoidal input voltage with vm sin omega t so this is the mathematical representation of the sinusoidal signal vm sin omega t vm is the maximum amplitude of the input signal for example the amplitude means this is the maximum amplitude of this ac signal vm times sin omega t omega is equal to 2 pi f okay so vm sin omega t i replace with instead of vo and then d omega t so uh, here we know that why i put zero because of here pi to 2 pi we don't get any output so we get only output here so this output is equal to input so based on that assumption you know that is the kirchhoff's law right so total input power is equal to total output power for ideal circuit uh, if it's not ideal circuit of course the practical circuit there may be some losses but we do not consider that here we assume this is an ideal circuit so input power is equal to output power so whatever i apply here i get at the output the same so i am putting this vo is equal to vo is equal to vm sin omega t d omega t so now what i am going to do this vm is a constant i am taking it outside so vm divided by 2 pi and sin omega t what is the integral of sin omega t that is minus cos omega t so i am making the integration now this is the standard formula so and then the limit is 0 to pi so now i am applying the limits in this equation so i am applying pi and then 0 so minus cos pi plus cos 0 so what is the cos pi value it is equal to minus 1 cos 0 is also 1 
So minus into minus, uh, then it, that is going to be plus. So this is going to be one plus one is equal to two, right? And he, we have already Vm divided by two pi. So these two and these two can be canceled. So VO average is equal to VM divided by pi. This is our first equation we find out. So the average value of the output is equal to VM divided by pi. This is the standard mathematical formula. You can use it whenever you use this half wave rectifier uncontrolled with resistive load. And what is the average value of the output current, load current. This is the output voltage we find out just before. VO. So the, what is the output current? IO. This is VO. Average value of the output current is equal to VO average divided by R. This is also the standard formula. So we know what is VO average. We find out here Vm by Vm divided by pi. So Vm divided by pi times R. This is the formula for IO average. So out of, I told you we have to find all these parameters, right? So we find out already VO average and IO average. Now we have to find the rest of the parameters. Okay, so now we have to find out VO RMS, RMS value of the output voltage. So first, what is RMS? RMS means root mean square value. So if you divide this one by one, let us say root means what? Root means that is the square root, square root, right? This is called root. Mean means average. So here, uh, so if you want to find the average, we have to use integration. And then square means what? We know whatever the number x, you can multiply one more time, that is called square. So x, uh, maybe let's say this is a m. So m times m. So we can call this as a m square, right? So root means that is a square root, average is the integral, and then the square means that is just a squared value. If you put everything together, then that is called root mean square value. So, RMS is a square root of mean of average of squared value. When we see in the mathematically, you will understand what is that. So we need to take the average of the squared values, then put the value under square root, that is RMS. In VO average, we found the average of the instantaneous values this one, in the VO average, we find the average of the instantaneous values. Instantaneous values means in each point, infinite number of points. So we made already that. So now we need to square the instantaneous values and then make square root. That is called VO RMS. We will see now how can we find that. So RMS value of the load voltage, VO RMS, is equal to one divided by two pi. The period, the time interval is zero to two pi, zero to two pi, zero to two pi. And VO square, remember the definition of roots, uh, the RMS, root mean square. So I am making here, the first one is, this is the root. So the square root, I can also refer uh, the square root, whatever may be the number is m. So I can represent the m to the power one by two. So the same, both are indicating the same. Square root of m is equal to m to the power one divided by two, the same. So instead of putting square root all the way, I am putting this whole power one by one divided by two. So one divided by two pi, this is the output voltage I represent and the limit is zero to two pi. The VO, that is the output voltage, I have to make a square, and then the d omega t, the everything is under the root, square root. So RMS, that is the square root of, square root of 
means of integral and squared value. So VO square, right? So then this is called RMS, VO RMS. So you should know the meaning. If you split one by one, then you will understand the entire meaning of what this RMS means. So now we will go to the mathematics now. So one divided by two pi. So integral, I divide this interval zero to pi and then the pi to two pi. Pi to two pi, I don't care because output is zero. Pi to two pi, the output is zero. So I make this uh, term, I take away this term. So now I have only zero to pi p o square d omega t whole power one by two. Don't forget that whole power one by two. So one divided by two pi, zero to pi. This v o is what is v o? It's equal to output power is equal to the input power. Input power is equal to v m sine omega t. I already told here somewhere. Yeah, the input power is equal to v m sine omega t. Vm is the maximum amplitude of the input signal. So I am applying the same. So Vm, because of the square, I put Vm square, sine square, omega t, d omega t, whole power. You see whole power, one by two, it means this is square root. And now I am taking this Vm outside. So it means like uh, I'm taking out of the square root. So it's I can cancel this square and this uh, square root. So it's going to be Vm. And this two pi also I'm taking out of this square root. So it's going to be square root of two pi. And then the rest of the things I'm putting in the same. So integral zero to pi and sine square omega t. I can also write this like this, one minus cos two omega t divided by two. That is the standard formula. So one minus cos two omega t divided by two d omega t. The same thing, I just rewrite like this. So I take this two outside. So that is going to be square root, right? So this square root of two pi, I can write into square root of two, square root of pi. And then this one is when it comes outside of the square root, it's going to be another square root. Square root multiplied by square root, it's going to be two and then pi. So that is what I wrote here, two multiplied by square root of pi, Vm is we already taken out here. So Vm, so this is okay, this is a constant here. Now I have one minus cos of two omega t, I have to integrate. So when I apply the integration formula, constant when you integrate, one become just omega t minus cos two omega t, when you integrate, it becomes sine two omega t divided by two. And the limit is zero to pi. Zero to pi, everything is under the square root. Not this constant, because we already finished the square root of this constant side. This part have under square root. So now we have to apply the limits zero and pi. Then what will happen if you apply, then pi will be the pi, and then here it will be zero minus zero. So even if you apply this pi and zero limit here, it's going to be like this. Pi minus zero whole power one by two, it's still under the square root. So it means like this square root of pi, and we already have the constant here, Vm divided by two square root of pi, square root of pi, square root of pi got canceled. So the output of RMS value is VO RMS is equal to VM divided by two. This is the formula. This is the formula number or equation number three. And this is how we have to calculate the RMS value. And the IO RMS is equal to uh, VO RMS divided by R. We know what is VO RMS, that is VM by two or VM divided by two, VM divided by two times R. This is the IO RMS. So now we have derived VO RMS, IO RMS. In the previous slide, we have derived VO average, IO average. So according to our first slide, how many we finished? We finished four things and we still have four more. This four more is very easy. 
where are we now yeah so now we have to calculate the load power or the output power this is the another parameter so power po average is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi this is the limit integral of 0 to 2 pi po dwt so the in the as i mentioned here dc output the effective value is always the average but in ac if you have a ac then the effective value is always the rms value ac means rms dc means average you should remember this keyword okay so now uh, one divided by two pi i divide this uh, limit zero to pi and pi to two pi zero to pi and then pi to two pi and then the pi to two pi the output is zero so i cancel this term and i have this one the vo i know how to write the vo so i am writing v so remember po here p is we know according to ohm's law p equal to vi right so i am writing this po as a vo ivo vo ivo it just o is indicating output output power is equal to output voltage multiplied by output current so now i have to <coughs> write the corresponding values vo is equal to vm sin omega t that you know that and then the similarly the current is vm sin omega t divided by r and because v by r right i is equal to uh, v by r this is another formula so we know v is vm sin omega t so vm sin omega t divided by r so now i have this one now i have to simplify this i take out the constant outside and then the vm outside vm we have one vm and we have another vm vm square divided by 2 by r and you will have like this sine square omega t and sine square you can convert into 1 minus cos 2 omega t divided by 2 and then you can do the integration same like the whatever we had seen in the previous slide 1 becomes omega t cos becomes sine 2 omega t divided by 2 this is the standard formula integration formula you apply the limit then you will have a pi minus 0 the pi and the pi can be cancelled and then the formula for po average is equal to vm square divided by 4r this is the formula this is the formula number five or e e equation five so po average is equal to vm divided by 2 uh, so pm divided by 2r so this one So we have already derived this vo RMS. Remember, we have derived vo RMS, IVO RMS, right? If you multiply this vo RMS and IVO RMS, you will get PO already, PO RMS. PO RMS, we know P equal to P is equal to VI. So if you apply this P is equal to VM by 2 and I is equal to VM divided by 2R. So then you will get what you will get here, Vm square divided by 4R, right? So instead of applying directly, instead of applying directly this into this formula, but we did mathematically, we find out the power P average here. So you can also directly apply the values from previous slide and you can calculate this P average. Okay, so power, you can, you have so many different formulas for power calculation actually. So power is equal to V times I or V square divided by R or I square times R. Diode conduction time is equal to pi by omega. PAV rating of the, it means what? How long the diode will conduct? So the diode is conducting only up to 180 degree. So 180 degree divided by 2 pi F according to the frequency. And the PAV rating of the diode is equal to the maximum value of the supply voltage. And input power factor, this is one of the important thing you should know that. Maybe when you study about electrical machines, generators and transformers, 
you have studied about power factor power factor is one of the very interesting topic whenever we study this power electronics okay the power factor means angle between vs and is so here you have the input current and the input voltage the angle angle between this input input voltage and input current is the power factor okay let us see here now um when the switch is on okay now it means like we have no switch now we are just turning on this uh, diode so what is happening supply voltage rms value is equal to vs vs and then the supply current rms value is is or irms so now the angle between this vs and is that is called cosine of the angle so this pi is the angle cosine of the angle cos pi so we call technically <clears throat> this as a cosine of the angle cos pi is equal to vs uh, actually vrms by you can see here um, we can make the output power is the dc here so the average value we have to use so cos pi s is equal to vrms uh, times ivrms divided by vs uh, times is so it's the same actually so this is the output power output power divided by input power let's say input power so output power uh, so we can say vrms ivrms and then vs is actually according to this kirchhoff law input power is equal to output power especially the current input current and output current are the same so i cancel this so vrms divided by vs this is the formula for input power factor so input power factor is equal to this is one of the another important equation so what is the equation number equation number six input power factor is equal to vrms divided by r we already derived vrms and vs just before remember here vo rms and where is vo so we have also derived vo and vo rms so we are just going to apply these two values and then we will get the power factor like this you know this is these are the two values so vm if you apply in this formula vm divided by 2 divided by vm divided by square root of 2 otherwise we can write in the other way vm divided by 2 multiplied by square root vm so vm vm can be cancelled so this root just to 2 we can write the square root and square root this square root square root be cancelled so the output will be 1 divided by square root 2 so the input power factor of this this circuit is 1 divided by square root of 2 or 0 0.707 so this is the input power factor of this circuit so input power factor is always lagging so so far i think we have finished for this circuit we wanted we have we know the conduction time piv value of the diode and then the input power factor so far what we get seen single phase half wave uncontrolled uncontrolled rectifier with r load we have derived formula for output average value of the output voltage output current rms value of the output voltage output current and the load power these are these first five parameters are important and then the diode conduction time piv input power factor these are secondary parameters